What's up, beautiful family? Hope y'all are having a great Saturday morning. I am uptown. I wanted to grab a couple things. We are going to the Monster Jam tonight, and uh, I think it's going to be really, really fun. Um, my son is absolutely obsessed with monster trucks, and you know, he has the toys. He always sees them on video and on TV and stuff, but he's never really, you know, been to something like this and like seen them in real life. So I'm really, really excited for him. Um, it is cold and rainy outside, so that's like the downfall of it all, but I'm gonna get some umbrellas. I'm hoping that this rain is gonna let up. They said that it's supposed to rain, uh, I guess, on and off all day, but it did say that hopefully, <laughs> The rain's gonna let up uh, in the evening time, so we're just gonna bundle up and make the best of it. We have the tickets, so we just need to go. So, um, yeah, I'm just uptown, and I grabbed um, some Starbucks this morning, and, um, you know, I talked about on my community tab how um, I wanted to start doing just little mini teachings here and there obviously only when the Lord like shows something to me and um, I just get excited about it and I want to share it with you guys. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do today. Um, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are probably not going to be ready for this truth. Um, you know, I, I get so emotional when I read, you know, <laughs> when the Lord like shows me something or um, I didn't know that was there or, you know, he just brings me into deeper understanding. And the more I just like meditate on that deeper understanding that like I have, it just makes me emotional because it just goes to show you like the heart of the father. And it's like all these things that you thought that you knew, all of these things that you thought Christianity was, um, all these things that you were taught growing up, a lot of it, actually most of it, um, even I had to unlearn. And I was thinking about it, you know, there's a lot of people that really went through some like rough, uh, you know, churches and, um, teachings and had to unlearn a lot more than me. You know, I think about the things that I've had to unlearn, um, you know, but that it probably, probably doesn't even compare to a lot of the things that other people have had to unlearn, uh, growing up in big charismatic churches and things like that. And so, um, it's just, it's amazing how, you know, we always talk about how uh, the word repent means um, metanoia, right? It means a change of mind. And <clears throat> the Lord literally, oh, girl, you better get that stuff in that truck. It's raining out here. She got pillows wide open. <laughs> um, it's really just a yucky day, y'all. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, we always talk about the word repent and it meaning metanoia. And I think a lot of people maybe still question that because, you know, it's just all of these things that we've been taught our whole life have literally just been seared into our brains and like having to unlearn something that you've thought for so long is actually really hard. And that is not saying that we shouldn't say sorry um, to God for the things that we do wrong. Um, and that's where a lot of the Pharisees will twist what we say because, um, you know, I say time and time again, and I really want you guys to understand and know that, um, that when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you mess up, um, the Lord, you know, when you feel that feeling inside, you know, that's, it's the Holy Spirit, but he's convicting you unto righteousness. And, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit, you naturally want to say sorry for the things that you've done. And I do it all the time. I mean, it's a literal relationship. Like you have a literal relationship with Jesus and you know, it's just like a relationship here down on earth with your spouse or your, your, uh, your best friend or your child. Um, you always want to communicate and you want to tell somebody that you're sorry when you have done something that hurts their feelings or you, that you know, that is not right. And so, you know, I naturally just always do that because it's just what happens when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Um, you feel sorry, you know, you feel that godly sorrow. And, um, so, you know, uh, it's just, you know, there's been, there's so much teachings that, that are out there that have been out there that are still out there. You know, it's just this whole other doctrine that you, you know, there's, and this is where they twist it. They, they try to say that we are saying you don't have to say sorry for sin. Um, 
But when it comes down to it, when you're telling people that you have to repent of every single sin or all your sin um, to stay saved, to like maintain your salvation, it's a false gospel. And there's really just, there's something to be said there because People are literally telling others that you have to repent of every single sin to like stay saved or get saved. And, um, and so that's when you have to go to the word of God and ask the Lord, okay, well, what, what really is the truth? Like, what does repent mean? Because, you know, I've seen this like never ending cycle and I used to do the same, the, the same thing all the time. Like just constantly, like almost in a sense, you know, metaphorically begging on my knees for forgiveness when I didn't realize at the time that I had already been forgiven. And um, it's it's a really nasty cycle that you can get into mentally when, you know, uh, when you're messing up or, you know, you messed up again and you feel like you have to say sorry or to repent of that sin to stay saved. And it's just not the truth. And while we should, like, that's where God wants you to find freedom. Um, he wants you to find freedom in knowing that you are forgiven of your sin. And that's why you have to know your identity in Christ. You really, really have to understand the gospel. Um, you really, really have to understand that to be able to like actually rest um, and know that like, you know, you're not going to be thrown into the gates of hell um, because you forgot to say sorry for lying to Susie yesterday. You know what I mean? Um, and some people don't get that. Um, and it's okay. And, uh, because, you know, everybody's on a different level right now. And the Lord is teaching, um, each one of his children individually, uh, at different rates and paces. Everybody is at a different walk. And that's why I said that, you know, this today, some people might not be ready for this truth, but I'm about to, um, literally bring you the most powerful scripture in about, let's see, one, two, three, four verses <laughs> and literally like it's just so powerful it is so powerful and if you guys haven't read this please do um you know all of this all of this talk about you know how there's no <laughs> oh god um man the holy spirit today um saying things like there's no such thing as a gay Christian. There's no such thing as a gay prostitute. Or, uh, I'm sorry. A, uh, there's no such thing as a saved uh, Christian. There's no such. Oh my gosh. What is wrong with me? I've seen people say, <laughs> get it together. Um, there's no such thing as a saved gay person or a um, gay Christian. I've seen people say there's no such thing as a saved a prostitute or a um, Christian uh, that is still dealing with prostitute, um, prostitution or uh, homosexuality. Um, oh my gosh, anything that you can think of, any kind of sin that the human brain would say, wow, that's way worse than lying. You know what I mean? Because, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, Jesus says that sin is sin. Like if you've you guys know this. If you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. Um, if you have thought a wrong thought against your brother in your mind, you've already committed murder. So Jesus was trying to put it into perspective to us that literally like, even though we see some sin greater than others, that's not the way that Jesus sees it. He says, everyone falls short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. Like, then he was trying to put it into perspective that you guys may think that this sin is way worse than this one, but at the end of the day, it's all the same to me. Like all y'all fall short. <laughs> and that's why we have to have faith in Jesus Christ um, and believe on him for our salvation so that we can be counted worthy. Um, and so anyways, uh, you know, so I've been seeing all these things, right? And it's just so hypocritical, especially coming from grace teachers or preachers, because it's just simply not the truth. Like out of one side of their mouth, and I believe this is coming from, you know, actual brothers and sisters in Christ that really just don't have that full clarity yet. And, you know, it's at the end of the day, like that's just something they, that they have to, they got to humble themselves and say, hey, I might have this wrong. Go to God. Like you guys know, like you've, you've been following me for a long time. I had to do that because, you know, when I was taking it personal, right, I had a lot of brothers and sisters when I was in error because I didn't understand at the time were coming to me. And at first I was taking it personal and, you know, but I had to humble myself and I got off of YouTube and I said, Lord, like I remember I was in my kitchen and I said, Lord, 
please show me what the truth is, whatever it is. Like, I don't care if it's one way or another. Like, everybody's telling me that I'm wrong here and I need to know. And it was like a light bulb. It just completely, the Lord says, you don't have because you don't ask. Like, all you have to do is ask me. Like, don't think that you have it all figured out. You know, don't, don't let your pride get in the way because I'm seeing a lot of that right now. And so I was there. I get it. I understand. I was once there. Um, and God had enough mercy on me to show me the truth. And so it's literally all you have to do. It doesn't make me any more special than anyone else. Um, you know, Chrissy, her too, like it happened for us at the same time, you know, and unfortunately there were people that we were talking to at the time that, um, had it wrong as well and had an opportunity to go and seek God and they decided not to. And that's why they're still teaching hypocrisy. Anyways, I don't want to get off on a tangent there. Um, but let me read this to you really quick. Like, <laughs> This is so powerful, guys. Um, all right. So in Matthew, if you want to grab your Bible really quick, I know some people like to follow along uh, if you're fine with me just reading it to you. But I know some people like to grab their Bibles and mark or whatever. Um, but I'm in Matthew chapter 21 and I'm in verse 31. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, not 31. Um, 21. Let's see. Let's start. Okay, verse 28. We're going to start Matthew 21, verse 28. And it says, But what do you think? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first. And Jesus is giving a parable here. He's trying to teach a lesson. Um, but what do you think? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. So go work until day um, in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. <laughs> and he came to the second and said, likewise. So he had two sons, right? So the first one, he went to the first one and he said, um, go and work today in my vineyard. And the first son said, I will not. But then he, but afterwards he repented and he went. So did he repent of his sin right there? That's not what Jesus is talking about at all. He's taking it. He's talking about, uh, he changed his mind. So if you want to read it in that context, really context really quick, um, he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he changed his mind and went. So Jesus is speaking right here. This word repented is a change of mind. All right, so let's move on. So he went to the second son, right? And he said, likewise. So he told him to go do the same thing. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. So he said he was going to go, but he didn't. And then Jesus said in verse uh, 31, um, which of them did the will of his father? So he was asking them, which one of those two sons did the will of his father? And they said unto him, the first and then Jesus said back to them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And even when you saw that, repented not afterward that you might believe him so i don't know if you guys know what um the publicans or a harlot is so the when jesus speaks about the publicans believing him he's talking about the tax collectors and if you don't know what a harlot is, if you if you go to the NIV, and I really love the KJV version uh, version because it it's the most accurate. But sometimes um, you can reference back to NIV if you want to if something's not making sense. But if you don't know what a harlot is, it's prostitute. Okay, so Jesus is saying right here. Let me read verse thirty two again. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterwards that ye might believe him. So, they, so what he's saying is the, the tax collectors and the prostitutes heard about these things and believed him, right? And that made them worthy to go into the kingdom of God. He said, these publicans, these tax collectors and these prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God before you 
because you don't believe. Because John came unto them uh, the way of righteousness. Like he was giving them like the way on how to be saved. You know, how to be counted righteous. And they didn't believe him. But the publicans and the prostitutes did believe him. And when they heard it, they still didn't repent. Because he said, repented not afterwards that ye might believe him. Change of mind. <laughs> like, how powerful is that? And it, and what, what really caught, really caught me, guys, and this is super deep, all right? What really just stood out to me with this, okay, is that he says, he says, the publicans and the harlots, he's saying the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God before you. It didn't say the former, the former tax collectors after they repented of their sin and cleaned their lives up and made sure that they weren't a tax collector anymore went into the kingdom of God. He didn't say the prostitutes um, that repented of their sin and cleaned their life up and made sure that they didn't deal with that in their flesh anymore. You know, he didn't say, oh, those are the ones that went into the kingdom. The publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you because they didn't believe. They didn't repent. They didn't have a change of mind. Let's go back really quick to this two sons. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. He changed his mind and went. It's so powerful, guys. This whole... Uh, okay, hold on really quick. Sorry about... Um, verse 31 where he says, Whether whether of them... Um, or said, which, which of them did the will of his father? Right? So, what is the will of his father? Because Jesus is obviously speaking a parable here. But he had, he had a... Um, oh my gosh, that's really... It's distracting me. There we go. <laughs> he said, which of the, which of them did the will of his father? And so while Jesus is speaking this parable, he really is, he's, he's speaking of something deeper here, right? So if we want to read in context, if we want to rightly divide the word of truth, we need to flip over to, um, John chapter six, verse 40. And that reads, and this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. That is powerful stuff, guys. And if you still do not have eyes to see this, this is not my words. This is the words of Jesus. The will of the Father is to believe so that you can have eternal life. And... There are people that die in all kind of sins every single day. Now, even though when we become saved, we became we become a new creature in Christ, right? Jesus doesn't see us as that sinner anymore. But it doesn't mean that Jesus makes us perfect and just changes everything and, you know, just wipes all of our, um, you know, struggles away. Jesus does deliver from things and I can go into a testimony later again and a really in-depth testimony if I need to about the things that I went through that God delivered me from. But the fact of the matter is, is that people still deal with things and for others to say that there's no such thing as these type of Christians, you just read right here in the, in the word of God that says that that's not true. The only thing that, that makes somebody uh, worthy to escape, worthy to enter the kingdom of God is the blood of Jesus and in believing in him. The only way we're righteous is by our faith. And that's, that is how we are justified. And, you know, just this whole doctrine of that you have to, you know, you, you can't do this anymore or, and it's not the fact that, you know, we want to, even John struggled and he said, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I want to do, it's like, I don't do. And he's like, oh, it's so conflicting. Like who's going to save me from myself? And, and so it's not condoning sin. It's the fact that we do deal with sin still. And that looks different for everybody. 
And if you're somebody that says that you're without sin, well, Jesus says that you're deceived and the truth is not even in you. So I really, really just want, I hope that this blessed you today. Um, I don't even know how I'm at 20 minutes. I just feel like I was just at a minute. <laughs> um, I said a mini, a, a mini teaching. Um, I'm going to try to maybe keep them a little shorter, but um, that's some really, really powerful stuff, guys. And um, I just want you guys to see the truth. You know, the times that we're living in right now is so critical and it's crazy because I was just talking to some brothers and sisters about this. Like you look around, and you see all these tents and stuff being set up and all that, that I believe are, are, are literally going to be used for the actual Mark the Beast at, you know, at some point, but you, you see all of these things happening around you. You can literally see the Mark of the Beast, like forming before our very eyes. And it's like, you look at the people in the world around you, like scroll on Instagram, like scroll, you know what I'm saying? It's like, everybody's literally just living their life. Um, and we don't know hearts, but like living their lives, turning a blind eye, just so many people are deceived and cannot see the times that we're in. And Jesus says, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. Like people are eating, drinking, marrying, like that is what we're seeing right now. So many people have no idea what is literally about to happen. And times right now are so critical for people to know the truth because if any other gospel or any other truth is being preached, it doesn't save. And it's time for people to be set free out of this legalistic mindset um, and come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ because it's so freeing. It's so powerful. Um, and I just want you guys to be able to see it the way I see it. Um, and so I hope this blesses you today. I'm going to cut it short. Um, I love you all and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.